Hey guys, Young Blood with you for your Should You Buy video on the Cyclone. I'm really talking about this dune buggy-like craft. Technically, it went up for sale yesterday as part of the limited war bond sale. Um, but is now available to purchase for anybody using credits if you have them available in your bank. And the sale is going to be running through August 2nd. Now, what we thought was going to be there was just one ground-based vehicle really turned into a range of ground-based vehicles with different capabilities. And regardless of the model that you're looking at, there's two seats in the cockpit area that give you full control of the vehicle to either person and a lot of panels to allow for control over the other systems. They also mentioned that there's controls for other add-on modules, which I assume are referring to the back options that differ between the variants. The Cyclone has independent suspension, as well as high-tech tires known as X-Tech technology that pairs with the WMTS system that basically analyzes the ground and decides if these blades should end up protruding um, to give you better traction. My guess is that soft terrain gets the blades out, hard terrain does not. Tumbrol, being an ex-military contracting company, brings military-grade armor that's lightweight but durable, uh, made out of composite materials, giving you a nice, firm outer shell. Um, and, and something I didn't expect, the front of the Cyclone has jump jets that are designed to give reverse thrust after a long jump to allow for safer landings, which is kind of an exciting option, and it's kind of exciting to think about jumping all over the place. Now, some of the phrasing indicates that the platform was designed with flexibility in mind with the ability to add different modules later. And I'm not sure if that's something we can swap out later as part of a configuration process or if that's just kind of in lore as part of the design of the base craft to allow for easier creations of the variants later on. Now, we should hopefully get more information on that in the Q&A that's typically released on Wednesday the following week. Regardless of the variant options, though, um, which we'll get to in just a sec, speed, agility, control, and flexibility seem to be the primary selling points of this ground vehicle. Now, when it comes down to the variants, there's five total, starting out with the base model that sold at $40 in cash and $50 if you want to be able to use store credit. And just know that these others um, that I'm going to talk about, the lower number is the cash-only number, the higher number is the store option. So um, just know that as I go forward. Uh, the Cyclone base has an open flat back area that allows you to strap in and stow cargo for safe transport around planet surface and hauling goods back to your ship or making short range deliveries. Uh, and I think frankly that this is the most practical version of the ship, um, of this craft, because I think you get the most ability out of it. Uh, the TR or the turreted version is going to be $45 or $55 and it comes equipped with a size 1 man turret on the rear that's designed to spin 360 degrees for full coverage of the horizon and comes with the added benefit of the only version that actually allows you to carry three people around. Uh, the turret variant is really focused to be more of like a supplemental craft to support militia and security details. Uh, the RC or the Racer comes in at the same price at, um, as the TR, so $45 or $55, and has the modified intake system that allows for more bursts of speed when needed through boost, kind of like what we see on the Archimedes. In addition to that, it also has quote-unquote tools to customize handling, which I think probably ends up equating to traction control options, like maybe having the ability to fold the, fi the tire threads actually flat, um, you know, on demand, which would then give you more speed at the expense of control. That's kind of my guess. Uh, the RN, or the recon model, is the same price, $45.55, and is primarily used for ground scouting, with an increased scanning ability through what looks to be an array dish on the back, um, you know, and an ability to kind of place beacons. And that beacon placing ability opens up not only being a scout, but the ability to help organize and command a ground fleet. I think that there is some search and rescue ability with this variant, primarily focusing in on finding people using your scanners um, and transporting them quickly back to help. And the final version is the AA or the anti-air version, and it's the most expensive version coming in at $60 or $70, providing not only missiles to engage air targets, but countermeasures designed to help protect ground troops. The countermeasures were a bit of a surprise to me, and I found it a little bit odd since missiles aren't likely to lock onto troops, but I guess it could still end up providing um, protection to vehicles in the area or potentially structures. Um, it's also got the chaff on board, which I assume could be used to kind of confuse radar in general, so that may be another purpose. Um, I still think this thing looks to only have two missiles with the images showing blast shields, not additional missile locations, but I think we'll get clarification on that in the Q&A post coming soon. So I think when you compare this to something like the Ursa, the Cyclone should handle terrain better, it should move faster, and it, it really has many more options and versatility. The Ursa, on the other hand, is more capable at moving people. Up to six of them is completely enclosed for better environmental protection and comes stocked with a deployable weapon. Which one is right for you depends entirely on how you want to use it. I'm also interested in comparing the cargo capacity of the Ursa to the base Cyclone. 
Also, the Ursa gets a lot of versatility based on the one version. It's a pretty flexible craft, but the line of Cyclones has a lot of gameplay options. It's just going to end up depending on how modular it ends up being and what your upgrade ability is without having to buy the different variants later. The Cyclone compared to something like a Dragonfly or a Nox is an interesting discussion too, with the obvious difference being that you can use the Dragonfly and the Nox in space. Outside of that, the bikes should probably be more controllable because they hover, and as such, they should be very smooth riding comparatively. The Nox doesn't haul any cargo, the Dragonfly very little, with the Cyclone appearing to kind of beat both of them in the cargo hauling category. So overall, I'm expecting the Nox to be faster than the Cyclone, but honestly, I'm not sure it could be compared with the uh, Dragonfly. I don't get the impression that the Dragonfly is going to be all that fast, um, but the, the Cyclone seems like it's going to be fast, so it may end up kind of meeting in the middle. So, who should end up buying the Cyclone? Well, if you don't already have a ground vehicle and you want to get one immediately upon release or have one available immediately upon release, then I think this is a really strong contender for a good option. It's fast, it's agile, and its ability to carry cargo make it a good option, especially when you start talking about the base version, which in my mind is the most useful and practical of all the Cyclones. I think the Ursa may have more value long term, but it's also bigger and thus harder to transport. I think the Recon is the next most valuable option as I see not only scouting, but potentially exploration ability. You know, is the increased scanner worth losing the cargo? For me, no. But for a more dedicated explorer or part of a search and rescue team, then I say absolutely. It's probably a more than likely or more than great trade-off. The turret and the AA versions I think are a little bit more limited, and I don't see a lot of value in them. I think I'd rather just have my ship ready or have someone flying around to keep you protected instead of relying on these ground vehicles. You know, missiles are easy to evade, so having a few of them, probably small ones, chasing after a fighter or other craft, it's really not much of a deterrent, at least in my mind. You know, I also think that the AA version is way overpriced. Now, as far as the TR version, I think I like the idea of a manned turret vehicle, and it almost sounds like a Halo Warthog, so it should be a lot of fun. But when you can use it, it's going to be tied to ground combat, which I don't think at this point looks like it's going to happen all that often. And lastly, you get the racer version. Um, if you just want to go fast like a little Ricky Bobby, then you go for it. You know, I bet the base version is going to be plenty fast. It's going to give you a lot more value for what you get in return when, with the cargo. But if you just want out the flat out fastest version, then you do you. The racer is a good choice. So overall, I'm going to tell you guys, I bought the base version and it's the one that I plan on sticking with at this point. But we are going to get more information in the QA post that I'll cover in a lot more detail. Finally, a few other notes to consider. Please don't buy this as an LTI token if you want to change it into a ship. It's a ground vehicle, so you cannot do that. You know, you can use it to get like an LTI Ursa later if you want, but not something like an LTI Saber. And finally, these vehicles should be relatively cheap to earn in-game. So if you're even on the fence just a little bit, let the sale pass. It's not going to be that hard to buy with UEC down the line. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it helped get you the information that you needed. If you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for more. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care. <laughs>